You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire. Now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. A cold breeze, heavy with the dampness of night, lays clammy hands on the Italian city of Naples. In the darkness along the deserted Via Della Rosa, a man walks down toward the dark area. Then, as he nears the entrance of a rubbish-strewn alley... Hello there, what's wrong? My brother, senor, he's sick. Very bad sick in the alley, senor. Huh? What alley? Oh, please help. Per favore, please. Why, sure, let's have a look at it. Oh, grazie, senor. Grazie. Oh, oh. He isn't here. Oh, it's, it's, it's kind of dark in here, little one. Where is he? Right above you, senor. Oh. You hit so hard with that paving stone. You have killed him. Ah, uh, what is the matter, Bianca? Here, let me go through his pockets. Ah, my luck, little sister. American money, cigarettes, one of these papers. You hold them while I strike a match. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Hey, you see? These are the ones. Hey, and this letter proves it. You see? This is the man they call X. <laughs> Last time, Pagon, no. I'm not going to give you Ken Thurston's address. I forwarded your mail mail letter to him, and that's that. But Mr. X hasn't answered yet, Mr. Chief. And he owes me money for work I did. I'll starve to death. Oh, here. He asked me to give you this. A petty cash voucher for $20. Miss Brooks will cash it for you. 20 bucks? <laughs> what a measly amount for all I did. Well, of course, if you don't want it, I... I'll take it. I'll take it. Yes, Miss Brooks. A call for you, sir, from Naples. Naples? I'll tell you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Thanks, Miss Brooks. Hello, Chief. Ken, what's the good word? Anything new on the hijacking of those American relief shipments? Oh, no, Chief. I only got here yesterday. Oh, yes, yes, of course. But, Ken, that gang's getting away with murder. And the ship carrying grain seed is due to arrive there tomorrow. Now, now you know what kind of a prize that'd make for them. Yeah. These people are hungry. They'd rather have grain seed than pearls. That's why I called. Now, what have we got on Alfredo Siconolfi? Siconolfi represents the Ministry of Agriculture there in Naples. He's a petty politician who straddled a shaky fence during the war. Looks like a shady customer from here. Wouldn't happen to have any uh, children, would he? Children? Yeah. A couple of kids were interested in getting a paper from me. Siconolfi's plans for storing and shipping that seed. I don't get it. What have kids got to do with this? I don't know yet. I'll let you know later. So long. Uh, but Ken... Uh... Uh, now, what in blazes did he mean by that? Oh, well. All right, Pagon, now we'll... Well... Yes, sir? Is Pagon Zellschmidt out there, Miss Brooks? No, sir. He left right after I paid him the $200. Uh, after you paid him what? The $200. The voucher you gave him. Why, that chiseling... He raised that voucher from 20 Where'd he go? From what I understood him to say, Chief, he's taking a business trip to Naples. I tell you, Senor Thurston, I do not like this. That paper contained the time that the seed was to arrive. The place we intended to store it, the freight route, things, everything that the gang of thieves could wish to know if they intend to steal it. Nothing will happen to it, Sigan if I can get the information I'm after. That's the connection between children in the dock area and the hijacking of relief shipments. There is nothing unusual about children in the dock area, senor. There are many like that everywhere. Flotsam of the war. There's no hope for them. They would be better off dead. Now, this is something I keep telling Francesca. Francesca? My secretary, always trying to do something for them. Uh, idealistic little fool. But why should you concern yourself over these lost children? 
They will all end up on the gallows anyway. Yeah. They could end up as stormtroopers in another world war. Signor Sicanolfi is very kind, but I am afraid my efforts are feeble ones. It is a great problem. Yeah, Francesca. In a war, it's the kids of the world who really get it in the neck. And there are thousands of them. Tell me, have you any had any luck with Guido and Bianca? Those names are not familiar to me, Signor Furston. Uh, I'm pretty sure those are the names, though I wasn't too conscious at the time. Oh, well, I've taken up enough of your time tonight. Must you leave so soon, Signor? Why not join me in a cup of coffee? I promise it will be very good. American coffee. Well, sounds wonderful after that boiled mud they serve in the hotel. Now I got work to do. I'll take a rain check on it. Maybe we've had a chance to... Oh, clumsy of me. I'm sorry. I've knocked your papers off the desk. <clears throat> you know. There you are. Grazie. But haven't you forgotten one, senor? Huh? This? No. No, this belongs to me. Belongs to you? But how could it be here? That's what I was wondering. Got a lot of dope on it about seed shipments. Good night, Francesca. Arrivederci. Mr. Thurston? Were you here, Mr. Thurston? Wait up for me. I'm coming. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hello, Pagan. You... Had any trouble finding me in the dark? That's a cinch. I got eyes like... Hey, you're not surprised to see me. Why should I be? I talked to the chief again. He used some pretty strong language about you and a petty cash voucher. But, Mr. Thurston, I can explain everything. It was all a big mistake. Your biggest mistake was finding me here down at the docks. You're going to work. Work? Oh, oh no. You've got no. 180 bucks to earn. Or go to jail for forgery. 180? But, but... That leaves me between the frying pan. Yeah, doesn't it? But, Mr. Thurston, I... All right. I'll... I'll go to work. Okay. You're starting right now. Come on. Yes, sir. But uh, why are we going down this dark alley? A ship carrying grain seed docked a couple of hours ago. This uh, La Madrone warehouse is where Sikonalfi planned to store the seed. Let's try this rear door. Oh, come on in. Mr. Thurston... Compared, compared to this, what, that alley was a sun garden. Quiet, maybe something. You! What is the matter with you? I stepped on something. Oh, oh a window dummy. A window dummy in here, you idiot. Th that's what worries me, because if it isn't... <clears throat> Mr. X, turn off that flashlight. It's not a dummy. Oh, uh, the night watchman. That sticker in his throat. Uh, who did it, Mr. X? And Why? Pagan, I told her that Sikonofi planned to store the seed in here, didn't I? Then what happened to it? Look at all those storage bins. Yeah, look at them. Empty. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken's assignment in Naples has proved that war wreaks its heaviest toll on the innocence of this world, the children. For the dock areas abound with youthful scavengers, some of whom he suspects are involved in the hijacking of American relief shipments. Now in the darkness of the La Madrone warehouse, it seems that a shipment of American grain seed has apparently disappeared. Mr. X, somebody bumped off the watchman and scrammed the seeds out of here. Nobody got any seeds. They were never in here. 
But that Mr. Sikonofi's plans. I had the seeds shipped to the Madre de Santos warehouse instead. Well, then, then why did we come here in the first place? Somebody was after those seeds. And they didn't know they were moved. Who do you think it is? Whoever it is, Pagan, they'd pay a lot to learn where that seed is right now. They would? Oh, sure. The worth of fortune to them on the black market. Uh, it would? Mm. Um, Mr. Thurston, you don't think maybe this Sikonofi could be the guy, do you? What's the difference? Huh? He'll never find out it's at the Madre de Santos warehouse. Of course not. How no. could he? How, Mr. Thurston, why are you looking at me like that? You don't think that I would possibly... Oh, Mr. Thurston, I swear by the father of my 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 father, Mr. Sikonolfi, that, that the green seed is there in the Madre de Santa Claus warehouse. Yeah, yeah. And all I want for this information, like, like, like I told you, is... Ah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, just right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 180 bucks. My last pair of silk stockings. Well, it is a small price to pay for a clear conscience. What made you break down and send for me? Because I believed you were sincere. And it was foolish to deny that I knew Guido and Bianca. Especially after you found the paper in my apartment they stole from you. Yeah. I had learned what they had done, Ken, and I took the paper from them. I did not tell you at first for fear you would punish them and... They have been punished enough. They and thousands like them, Francesca, living in bombed-out ruins like this one. Trying to scrape an existence from a world that kicks them around. There is still hope for them, Ken, with people like you willing to help them. There. Do you see them? Huddled around that small fire. Hello, Guido. Uh, Francesca. Bianca. I've come to visit Guido. I bring a guest with me. Guido, that man, he is the... Silence, Bianca. Why did you bring this man, Francesca? Kind of thought we might talk things over a bit. We have uh, nothing to talk about. Guido, why don't you try working with the other people in this world instead of against them? Well, there are no people in this world who care about me or Bianca. That's where you're wrong. I'd like to prove it to you. Might you give me a chance? And Guido needs no help from you or anybody else. And I do not need any help either, signor. My brother Guido will take care of me. He has promised. Yeah, you hear, senor? And that is a promise which I shall keep. Come on, Bianca. We will go. My offer's still good, Guido. Better think it over. I can give you the answer right now, senor. It is this. Arrivederci. <coughs> it is worse than I thought, Ken. They are incorrigible. Oh, well, it's not their fault, Francesca. Or the fault of any of the other kids like them. Well, then who is to blame? The people who use them. People who are responsible for what they do, who keep them from having homes and food and warmth and love. They're the guilty ones, Francesca. They're the guilty ones, all right. Wandering around warehouses at night all the time. This is the last one, Peg, on the Madre de Santos. See there? <laughs> Nothing but sacks all around. Sacks filled with grain seed. And here's where we have the payoff. That reminds me. How'd you make out with Sikonolfi? Oh, that was a sin. She came right across, but. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thanks for baiting the trap for me. Huh? Mr. Thurston. Wait. I think somebody's walking into it now. Now listen, listen. It's only a truck stopping outside. Yeah. And we may have visitors in here any minute. Hey, why did you turn off that flashlight? It's pitch dark. Quiet, listen, listen. <gasps> Mr. X, somebody's coming in. Shh. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, shut up. Quiet, quiet, will you? Oh. 
Stop right there, Sigan Alfie. Hey, Mio. Thurston. That's right. Drop the gun. Drop it. Si, si, Sigan. All right, now. What are you doing here? Well, I, I came to protect that seed, senor. Did you have to drive up in a truck to do that? I was already here when the truck came. When the banditti entered the warehouse, I opened fire at them. To protect the seed? Or to warn them that I was here? Your accusation is unjustified, senores. I think I can prove. I am certain that I shot one of them as he was running outside the door. Okay, Sigan Alfie, let's take a look. Mr. Rex, look. He, he did shoot somebody. Yeah, Pagan, he sure did. Oh, poor a 12-year-old girl named Bianca. See him now, as, as plain as I see you. Como esta, Dios? How are you? Como... Como... Doctor. She's in a coma, senor. What are the chances? We will not know for a little while. We can only do our best. I see. Okay. I'll check with you later. Senor Thurston. Hello, Guido. My sister, Senor. My little Bianca. How is she? We won't know for a while. What can I do to help, Senor? Tell me. What can I do for her? I, I promised my little sister I would take care of her. I must help. Guido, how long has it been since you prayed? I do not believe in God. Yeah, I heard Bianca say that. She also said you were wrong. That she had seen him. Bianca said she saw the Dios? Yes. You know, sometimes even tough guys need help when something means very much to them. Have you ever doubt you, Guido? Oh, oh Dios. Darme more, Dios. Please save my little sister, Bianca. <laughs> oh, save it, Dios. Please save it, save it. See, we... Oh, Ken. Hello, Francesca. Now, come in. Well, of course. But it is almost midnight. I thought I'd bring you up to date on our... Aid to children plan? No. Something has happened? Yeah. Guido found out where the seed was stored. He told the person he was working for. They came to get it tonight. What happened? There was a slight hitch in their plans. One of the kids was shot. Oh, no. No. Will she leave, Ken? Just before I left to come over here, the doctor said yes. Oh, thank the good Lord for that. The Lord you don't believe in. The Lord you taught those kids not to believe in. What are you saying? You were the one using those kids. They needed help, guidance. But you taught them to steal and lie. Oh, no, Ken. Why, you're the wrong. The crime was yours, Francesca. They helped to steal grain and seed, yes. You were robbing them of their souls. What? Well, this is ridiculous. I explained about that paper. Oh, sure. And took it to their hiding place to make your story stick. But poor secretaries in Naples can't afford silk stockings, Francesca. Or American coffee in their homes. And you gave yourself away completely by asking if, if she would live. Oh. How did you know it was Bianca who was shot? Who went there? All right, Ken. So you know. What good do you think it will do you now? No, Francesca. That gun won't help you. Sikonoff is waiting outside. Sikonoff? And the police. 
Don't stand a chance. Well? All right, Ken. I will go, but uh, it's cold outside. I, I will need a wrap, and I have one in the next room. So, go ahead. That's the way you want it. Midnight. Three days from now, an old year will die and a new year will be born. Perhaps a better one. The end of one life. The beginning of better new ones for Guido and Bianca. We can't let war ruin their lives again. All the lives of millions like them. That's one resolution we better all make. And keep. Or there may not be many new years ahead for any of us. show, Herbert Marshall. Thank you, Wendell. Next time we come back to you, next Sunday night at this same time, we'll be right at the beginning of a, we hope, bright new year. Thanks very much for being with us during 1947. One of the things we've, list we've liked best about the past year has been the knowledge that, that you were listening. And we trust being entertained by our show. We hope you will be with us next uh, on every Sunday night through 1948. We sincerely hope that for you and for all your friends and loved ones, we hope that 1948 will be a very happy new year. Well, that certainly goes for all of us here in the studio, Bart, and for our good sponsor, Frigidaire. And now, just to do a little forecasting for 1948, let's tell the folks about next Sunday's show. Right. Next week, our story is called Spot the Eight Ball. And I think you'll enjoy it because it really is packed full of excitement and mystery. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Richard Ayer's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Network.